Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of TJM, the Jagman. Uh, if you look closely to my left behind me, there's a red jag following me. <laughs> if you looked at my last video and went and had a look at that red jag and that black convertible or drag top jag, I ended up not getting the black one because the owner had reneged on me a couple of times and decided to keep it. But I didn't, I didn't want this red jag. I certainly didn't want it. But I kept thinking about it, lying in bed, thinking it had some good things about it. And I, it hasn't started since 2012, and I don't even know when it goes. But it had nice scallop, chrome scallop wheels on, and I really wanted a nice set of chrome scallop wheels. And it's got a few other good, interesting points too. So I ended up buying it for 500 bucks. Bit of a pain because it doesn't have a key so I had to drill out the ignition lock to actually get the uh, lock undone to actually move it so that was a pain in the neck but I've got it on the trailer we're heading back up to the Jag Cave it's going to take us about an hour and a half to get there we'll get it off the trailer and have a better look but um, yeah I don't know what I've got there <laughs> Well, we made it home. As soon as I pulled up, the rain's just dumped down and it hasn't stopped. I'm by myself, so I'm not going to get it off the trailer tonight, unfortunately. That's okay. I can just look at it. Remember, one of the reasons I bought this old girl is because I saw all these parts in the back seat and it's got a plethora of parts. This brand new, it's not brand new, Kimber dash, there's door toppings, there's a new left hand um, door handle which the other one's stuffed on that thing. A series one and a series two grill. And it could come up pretty nice and not that pitted. A little, no that's water. Yeah. And extra bits that are damaged on that car so it looked like they were going to spend some money on it before it got laid up. Pretty wet out here. I know the driver's seat's knackered, but I'm really interested to see what this passenger seat is like because it's got a seat cover on it. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, a pair of scissors. Oh, I feel like them. Oh, they cheapies. So, you've got a new one of them. I've got to replace that. I don't know. So, I only really bought it for the chrome scallops. I'm sure they'll polish up pretty nicely. And that stuff that was in the boot, especially the timber dash. But she'll so clean up all right. A little bit of rust here and there. I've just got to try and get started. And I don't know anything about the fuel, the tanks, or anything yet. So we've got to go through all that. Plus, plus, there's no keys to it. So I've got a really bit of an issue there. I'm trying to trace the old owner to see if they can find the keys. To it. They gave me keys, but none of them seemed to fit it. Just been staring at it in the rain. Isn't she pretty? That front guard's a little bit different colour. But look at that chrome work. I do love them in signal red. Looking forward to getting this girl off the truck <laughs> tomorrow. Well, it's still raining, and I'm sitting in this inside this old girl. She's pretty sad. <laughs> It's really rather dirty and old, like even though there's a new one of them. She's leaking a bit of water, but it has rained pretty heavily. Yeah, she hasn't had a lot of loving for a long time. But um, it's very original. I mean, look at this old mobile phone shit. Yeah, and the headlining sag. Uh, but that's the original headlining in this car, and what this is car's... 48 years old or something it's quite amazing the seats they've been recovered I think this material is like similar to what uh, VK Commodore material was back then and that's another issue I have to deal with had to drill that out just to undo that steering lock it was the best option I think because these are easy bits replaced I can get one of them
Well, we've got it in the garage. It looks good from this side. Some bits will polish up nicely, some won't. However, I don't know, something to play with. Okay, it's a couple of days later, the sun's out, so I've just pushed this old curl out to dry it out because it got pretty wet during that heavy rain. And I know you guys will think that I'm mad when I buy this thing. Well, for 500 bucks, you just couldn't knock it back, really. I mean, I didn't even know if it's going to go. It's got no keys, it's got rust. I need to work on the fuel system. I need to be able to crank it over. But, and I'm not going to make any money out of it, but it's all fun doing it. And if I can get this thing back on the road and it's actually drivable, all be it good. Um, and it was driving. It was a good car, apparently, oh, quite a few years back. So look, it's been registered as a road going, fully registered road going car since 1976 to 2015. So she would have had a lot of mechanical work done on over those years. <laughs> Wife is not happy because I've got way too much on my plate already. I shouldn't have bought it because I still got the series one that I've got to deal with. And that's just sitting up there doing nothing and every car needs some more work doing on it. But we'll eventually catch up. And I cut my teeth on these things. I know these things backwards. I've had about 20 to 30 of them. In fact, I think I've had about four in, this is the fourth one I counted up that I've had in, in Signal Red. And the other three were a lot better condition than this one. But I know a lot about them. So, and I can, I'll pretty much tell pretty quickly whether or not it's gonna be savable or not. But okay. I think first steps, let's get it cleaned up and get stuck into it. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do first, is get rid of them. Get rid of all of them. I'm seriously not a fan of these chrome spats, so let's just get, get rid of these first. Okay, well they've been on for a few years, but they haven't caused any rust issues. Oh, a little bit there. That's why I hate these things. They just get rust, dirt, and that crap just gets built up down that corner there. And all of a sudden, you've got a rusty guard. Yeah, they're not a nice fucking accessory, in my view. Maybe I should have left that one on. Hiding the rust spots. Bugger. Look at that. That's all because of that fucking chrome grilly bit. Those chrome spats, I hate them. Oh, it's just as bad, look at that. From those stupid awful spats. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Get them off boys. Toss them in the bin. some gunk build up on that um, that Welsh plug so I pressure washed the gunk off it now I know what the gunk was it was glue <laughs> oh well that should be easy fixed a bit more glue
used to get both caps open with a bit of persuasion. This one doesn't look too bad. It smells rather varnishy in there, but there's not too much rust, but... I'm a bit worried about this old girl. She's pretty dirty looking and rusty, so I'm just probably think the tank's exactly the same. We'll get to those now, see if we can drain some of that varnish out of them. <laughs> well, the left tank doesn't look too promising. It was empty. It had a few drops of water in it, and that's probably from me washing it. But look at that rusty shit that's come out of it. Let's have a look at the other tank. Well, I got a bit of a shock with that one. She's full and still got more in it. So I've run out of containers. And she stinks. Yuck, look at that. It's been in there for ages. But it wasn't leaking. So at least we know we've got one tank that's not leaking. That other one that was dry, well, who knows. Well, it's the worst I could have expected. Pretty bad. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And a bit more over there, 35 litres. Look at the shit that was in there. I do have two second-hand fuel tanks for Series 2 floating around. It's just a big job putting them in. And I guarantee you the one on the right, it's leaking or there's something wrong because it was dry as a bone. Okay, but at least we got that out of the way. I'm going to wash my hands now and get the smell off me. Go and have a shower. I'm going to try and repair this seat. But it's not as bad as it looked in the car. Obviously, the, the foam is split. That's only because the diaphragm has come adrift. And the diaphragm is actually in pretty good condition. So what's happened is the, the steel... Um, holes that hold the clips have actually broken which we can drill some new holes in those to hold it back i think this we can get this thing looking pretty good okay that's looking a bit better um i've drilled new holes in the ones that were torn unfortunately one of my little clippies broke i've got to make another one i think i've got another one on another diaphragm somewhere so we'll put that in later but not perfect but not sagging anymore it's going to be a bit of background noise and so I've just closed the garage door because they're mowing lawns out there but I've managed to work loose the lock for the boot haven't opened it yet it's the first time for me and you guys to see what's in there it's pretty darn clean huh. wow I mean she's a bit smelly like mildewy but far out I was expecting some horrors in here I wonder if we've got a spare. Oh, we have. So that's great, and that's clean and looks good. So because this one's going flat, I'm going to swap that over. Would know, being an Australian compliance, this thing in 1976 would have come out with Strongberg carburetors um, to comply with new emission standards back then. But they've been changed, which is a good thing because those Stromies can be pretty difficult to tune and uh, that uh, those, those thermal chokes are just terrible so it's got uh, HD8s in it now and HD8s are from a series one and nothing wrong with that but they're um, from an earlier model Jaguar but uh, not that we've got it going yet with them but an interesting fact also being a 1976 car it's going to have internal pumps in it and God knows what they're going to look like, but we have to work on them. It also has the Otter Switch choking mechanism on it that's obviously connected to inside the car because it's normally connected to that thermal switch there to switch it on and off when the water heats up. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's this switch here that I've just disconnected that was connected under the dash, but I'll, I'll find out where those wires are going later. Well, that's interesting. We've got a red wire that's connected to the earth. <laughs> and a black wire that's connected to I don't know and we've stuffed up the ignition switch when I was trying to drill it out but that's okay we'll just see I think I've got another one of them and there's the plug there hopefully and it'll fit we'll pull that out and have a look because I want to see if this thing cranks over at least before we do too much extra work on it and also that's a bonus it's got a stainless steel reservoir tank in it now, I don't know why there was a spare one of them in there, because this thing already has a stainless one, better than the original steel ones. That, they cause so much rust in your, in your cooling system. 
but they come in handy big time. So that's just going in the boxo parts. Mix and max two, the spares off a of series one. It's not gonna make any difference, it's gonna fit. But that was generally probably off that black car originally, how would you know? But they're also running wider tires on the 225 by 60 by 15, so I actually don't mind that. Just the car a little bit more stance. And being a 225, the 60 is similar to a 70s profile on a 205. I, roughly, if you match them up and put them together, it's not too bad under here, except for the mud. It looks like before they laid it up, they might have been paddock bashing this thing. So much mud on it. And those shockies look pretty good too. They look like they've been replaced. They feel good. Gas tech lip gas shocks. Yeah. It's a bonus. They're worth 500 bucks alone. Not that it means that much, but the, it could have been changed. But fuel was pressed for the right tank, and that was the empty one where the left tank was full of fuel. Just interesting. But as I said, it could have been swapped over at some stage. Well, I just took the battery up to this thing and smoke started cooking in the cabin. And uh, I think it was to do with me damaging the um, ignition switch to start with because there's brown wire here. Brown's always hot on these. We're shorting out. and Maybe it was just shorting out on a bit of the um, chassis. So I've cut the old... Uh, ignition switch off and I've actually managed to find a second-hand one in my box of parts which I have there I've still got to get the actual barrel I haven't got one of them so we're gonna touch the battery again and just see if we can get some power to this thing okay there's no spark that sounds like a good good start doesn't want to fit but well that Okay, good so far. Back to the cabin. And she's not shorting out now, which is good. Now, let's, let's put on ignition. Nothing. 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 Okay. No power whatsoever. Let's do a little bit more work on it. I've just hooked up my little switch to the solenoid to see if this thing cranks over, but the battery's pretty flat, but let's give it a go. It's not going to start, but I just wanted to see what the compression sounds like. That sounds not too bad. We won't do too much, but that sounds pretty good. Uh, well, hi guys, we might just wind this video up. I think we've achieved enough over the last couple of days. And uh, we're back in the big smoke now, and I'm here for a little while because we're heading on a, well, I'm heading on a, another enduro motorcycle ride next week. So that's going to take up a little bit of time. So I'm not going to get back to that car for at least a couple of weeks. And uh, from the comments I've received so far, everyone was telling me to walk away from that thing. Um, that, that unfortunately attracted me to it more. But I think we're getting there with it. And so if you enjoyed the video, just give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, you can do that too. And if you want to leave a comment, I love hearing from you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys. See ya.